Welcome to the Sales Mastery Summit. I'm Mary Pohl, your host, and with me today is Bill Cole, the mental game coach. Well, if you've ever found yourself in a sales slump and you're wondering what happened, you certainly know your sales skills didn't all go away. So quite often it comes down to, have you mastered your inner game for success? Really that mental game that keeps you really consistent in your practice. Well, today's expert works with clients to help them get into the zone on command. Wouldn't that be fabulous? The zone is really that place where your selling becomes effortless. You lose track of time. It's just very easy for you. So we're going to learn the skills to do that today. And I know I'm excited to know how to get into the zone on command. So let's get started. Welcome, Bill. Hi, Mary. Good to be here. Likewise. So, you know, let's just dive right in. What does it take to get into the zone on command? Well, um, for a lot of people, the zone is kind of a mystical, mysterious place. But what I've done over the bunch of years I've been teaching it is come up with a system and a process where people can learn it. Okay. And I started uh, really back in the early 70s when I was uh, an athlete. I played tennis and other sports. And I had a, a moment when... Um, I was in the zone, but in the 70s, they hadn't uh, coined the term yet. Okay. Uh, 1975, it was coined by the Hungarian psychologist at the University of Chicago, Csikszentmihalyi. With a long and, name. With a long name. And, uh, and then Tim Galway wrote the book, The Inner Game of Tennis, and then a whole series of those. And I read those and got very interested. And then in the middle 70s, I started doing Zen tennis workshops, teaching, and uh, use it with my performance. And then over the past uh, 25 years of doing that with athletes, 75 sports to date, um, some of my salespeople asked me, you know, that they played tennis or golf, I was working with them on that, and they said, can you do this for sales? I said, you know, I think I could. Then I started looking into what it would take in sales, just transferring the concepts over, and studied sales. I've been doing sales my whole life, but really studied it as a discipline, uh -huh. and uh, came up with a mental game of selling. Okay, I love it. Well, I'm familiar with Tim Galway's work, huge fan. I got to see him at a conference years back and gobbled up what I could, but it was always sports related. So I love the fact that you're really bringing it into the business world for us and helping us apply it to something that isn't necessarily as um, clear cut on your outcomes and your performance. Um, as is athletics. I know um, I personally, I'm familiar, I'm assuming our viewers are familiar with top performing athletes really working on visualization and mastering that mental game for their own to hit their own peak performance. So can you bring that into the business world for us? And what what are the approaches that we use to really master that mental game for business and sales? Exactly. Well, whatever client I'm working with, whether it's in sports or let's say speaking or sales or executive coaching, I always start with the zone because that's the template. Okay. That's, that's the goal. That's where you, everybody would like to be. And uh, what I do is I say, tell me about a time when you were in the zone. So if it's a salesperson, tell me about one of the best sales calls you ever made, best presentations, best whatever. And I say, actually go back there. I might even say, close your eyes and tell me everything about it. That Their eyes are closed and they're describing uh, the situation. Then I prompt them, tell me more how you felt. And this is the key thing. Not what the situation was, who was there, the players, but how did you feel? emotionally, mentally, what was going on in your head, what was going on in your body, what were the emotions, what were the feelings you had, what were your muscles doing, and then how were you behaving. And once they can get tuned into that, and I should add, a, you know, I've done this, like I said, 75 different sports, and even if I have a world champion or a world record holder sitting across from me in sports, they usually, even though they've been in there many times in the zone, they have a really hard time describing the zone. I would think. Because it's a little bit mysterious for people, and they either um, – you know, when they're in it, they don't dissect it, which is one of the problems. The zone goes poof, so you don't want to dissect it. But after the fact, they unfortunately don't spend time doing that. But that's why it's important for salespeople to keep a log of their great sales calls, negotiations, closing techniques, and how they felt so they can then benchmark those feelings and those thought processes and then replicate. The whole thing is replication. And prior to doing that, if you don't really know what you're doing, then replicating it is rather random right so you have to really know what you're doing so begin having them uh, you know talk about the zone and everything and I have a handout 
that I give them that has probably, I don't know, 40 attributes of the zone. And I hand it over to them or give it to them if I'm doing distance coaching. And I say, start making a check next to each item that you uh, notice. And by the time they're done, when they've only verbally said three or four things, they've checked off about 20 or 30. Okay. Because now, they, oh, yeah, that's right. It kind of jogs their memory. And um, they now, so, so now that they have a real understanding of what the zone is, I liken it to driving a car. If you're going to go someplace, you have the destination in mind. However, if you don't know where you're going, any old place will get you anywhere. Right. So you have that target, and that's why we have to know what the zone is. Now, the next thing I do is talk about, and tell me about a time when you choked. Tell me about a time when you, you stunk the place up in selling. You know, you just, it was no good. And they, everybody has that. They talk about how they failed and how the client didn't. Right stop. at the top of their mind, I'm sure. <laughs> top of their brain. Yeah. Now, what I want to do there is contrast the ideal with what we don't want. So they can see the contrast and also create a gap. And then I might ask him, now, what do you do to close that gap? Well, when I have a bad day, they give me some ideas of, of their, their tricks and tips when they're having a bad day. But the other reason I say that is now coming back to the taking a trip analogy. In, in California on the highways, we have these uh, raised reflective plastic things that are embedded into the, hi into the highway. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you know, if you, your car starts to blah, 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 like that, you immediately pull it back and you're all good in your lane. Well, in selling and in performing, we want to be in the performance lane or the performance zone. And you have to have a very acute awareness of when the front of your car, that's you, is starting to diverge out of your lane in the very earliest moment that's going towards choking. You have to become aware of the suboptimal performance that you're currently under, undertaking and instantly readjust, correct, make some adjustment, refocus. Let's just call it refocusing. If you do that, you stay in the proper lane of traffic or the proper zone of selling and all is well. The problem is people don't have an awareness either what the zone is, like where to go, or they don't have an awareness of the, let's call it the anti-zone, where they don't want to be, and they go off into the ditch until it's too, oh, gee, that was the worst sales call I ever, man, what happened? It went south. Wow, I don't, oh, boy, that was horrible. So they know what when it's bad. And they know what is good, but now this gives them really the nuts and bolts of what it actually is at a minute granular level. Okay. So we'll back up in a, a minute on what they're doing for the preparation, but it sounds like you're talking about in the moment and having um, the wherewithal to check in and see, am I in the zone or not? And if I'm not, move back into it. So really that's happening real time during a sales call. Exactly, because once they have the template in their brain, then the next thing they've got to do is build what's known as the third eye. And the third eye is this level of awareness. You know, they talk about this in yoga and meditation, where here's the two eyes, and the third eye is somewhere up above your your bridge of your nose, where as you're speaking and presenting and performing, it's not like you're outside of yourself, but there's another piece of yourself observing you and the situation, and that's something that can be developed. I mean, all great salespeople have that because they notice the uh, the prospect or the customer is losing interest, and the salesperson is excellent at regaining that interest. They ask a question, they stop telling, they maybe pause to create like a, a little notice in the person, and the whole in. conversation gets back on track. They draw yeah. them back in. So that's called self-coaching. First it starts okay. with awareness, then you have self-coaching, like in real time in the moment, as you said. And really the R word that I talk about all the time, which is refocus. So there's a lot of myths of the zone and, and peak performance. And one of them is that, hey, once I get in the zone, I'm good. Well, you're not good. It's not the Autobahn. It's not the Autobahn because once you are in the zone, somebody could go south, either the prospect or the, the client could mess you up or you could mess yourself up, which we'll talk about in some of the blocks to the zone. So you have to be extremely good at being aware of what's taking place <laughs> in real time and then really excellent at adjusting or the term I like to use again is refocus because it isn't nonstop perfection. It's in the moment adjustment. Okay. I'm glad that you pointed that out and have the R in your equation because I think that's where 
for me at least, the mental game work derails because in sports, certainly there are external factors that can interrupt you, but you know, really you're more in control of the situation. And in a sales call situation, it, you know, there's at least one other person in that dynamic. So you're not controlling everything as it rolls out. So, you know, there, it, you're not gonna stay in that perfect zone every moment because it's not just you. Right, now you just brought up a really good point. You used the word control. Now, the third thing I do after I talk about the zone and choking is I give them a handout with another checklist that I call control factors. Now, I have this for whatever discipline I'm coaching, and control factors is broken in, into three buckets. You know, I have it laid out in front of them. I say, just make a check next to things that bug you or that come up for you. And the way I describe it is there's a, a universe of things that are totally out of your control in sales. And you know, whatever that is, maybe possibly the time of the appointment because the customer has things, traffic, uh, the room you meet in, uh, internet connection, you could go on and on. So there's a pretty lengthy list of things that are not really in your control. Right. The, the middle bucket would be a list of things that are partially in your control. And maybe you have a degree of influence over them. Now these are largely the people aspects, getting through, to get, uh, getting through gatekeepers, talking to support people, uh, things like that. And then the third and the most important would be things that are in your control 100%. Okay. And it would be things like your breathing, your thoughts, the images in your mind, your muscles, your emotions, your behavior, your preparation. I and mean, there's a long probably the list in sales is like 60 or 70 things. I've got it down to a minute level. Now, the reason I give that to people is, you know, salespeople and business people tend towards being maybe micromanagers of themselves and situation because they want to succeed. Right. And it also leads to a lot of frustration when they can't control certain things. So the trick is when you see that those three uh, groups, particularly the ones that are out of your control, you have to learn to do two things. You have to identify them and then you have to learn to let them go and accept them and work around them. You can't fight them. So a lot of salespeople tend to fight things that are out of their control and that creates a dissonance and, and angst inside them and really noise, which really gets them out of the zone. Now we're talking blocks of the zone, and that's something the prospect or the customer can pick up. So the trick, now let's talk about how do you like how do you actually clear all this angst out? I think that's the next good thing to mention. You know, uh, peak performance is more of a subtractive concept than an additive one. Okay. And that means you don't have to do extra things to get in the zone. You have to remove things. You have to remove blocks. So think of it when you're tuning a radio station in and you, you don't have the push button, let's say it's on the dial, and there's a lot of you know crosstalk and noise, and finally you kind of work and then you hit the thing perfectly. Oh, it clear as a bell. Well, what you did was take out the noise, the multiple channels, and you got a pure signal. And that's another way of describing the zone. So when a salesperson is blocking themselves, how are they doing that? Well, they might have self-doubt. They might be thinking too much. They might be criticizing themselves too much as they go, you know, the inner critic. They may be just thinking too much of what they have to do. And a huge one for salespeople is they may be trying too hard. So I, I get the person to identify all these blocks and they go, yeah, that's me, that's me, that's me. Now. What do you do? You remove the blocks, and you, that's why I call it a subtractive process. Mm -hmm. You don't have to add anything to the equation. That would actually muddy it up more. You have to remove those mental and emotional difficulties. Yeah. So, now, so now how do you do that? Well, you do that by learning centering or calming techniques or mind clearing techniques. So now the next thing I teach the person is all right, say, you know, again, if they're in my office or if it's a distance thing or even just on the phone, video or not, I say, I'm going to teach you a little, we're going to do it right now. I'm going to teach you a little centering technique. It takes about 30 seconds to learn. And I suggest you do this sort of a thing to clear your mind and emotions and prepare your mind, body, emotions, and spirit for the call, the pitch, the whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Only takes 30 seconds once you know what it is. Although, you know, you could do it longer at home for other benefits. Now, people are thinking, is this meditation? Is this self-hypnosis? Not really. I mean, it's similar, but different names. The, maybe the outcome is very similar, but the way I teach it is sort of uh, non-denominationally, kind of like centering or relaxing. So all you do, you, your eyes could be open or closed, but better if they're closed. You just sit 
in a comfortable position. And kind of like you have a clicker on the TV, you change the channel, and I take the person through changing the channel. First thing I say is, uh, close your eyes and just tune into the position you're in. Just notice the body position you're in. There's no right, no wrong, as long as you're comfortable. Don't cross your arms, don't cross your legs, kind of an open posture. And right away they get to get a little more comfortable. Then I say, take the clicker, change the channel to breathing. Focus on your breathing. Take two or three or four deep breaths. Now what's going to happen is your breathing is going to slow down. Right? I'll say like you may notice your breathing slowing down. Take another deep breath in through your nose, out through your mouth. Hold a really long breath for about 20 seconds. I'll take them through what's called a one breath. They're holding it. I'm counting. They release. Then I'll have them observe certain things like maybe you notice there's a regularity on your breathing, a depth to your breathing, a fullness to your breathing. And now you may notice your mind is cleared out a little bit. Now, I didn't tell them to clear their mind out. I just said do the breathing, mm -hmm. and their mind did clear out. You gave their mind something else to do. Something else to do, and you're, you're relaxing the physiology for the person, or they're, they're doing it themselves. Mm -hmm. And at the end of this, I remind them that, you know, I was the tour guide, but you did the work. So now this is the subtractive process in action because mm -hmm. they have removed muscle tension, breathing that's too high and too fast and too furious, trying too hard, thinking, and they've just cleared the whole system out nicely. And just like we tuned in on the radio dial, they're more of a pure being. Mm -hmm. And they feel lighter, calmer, more relaxed. I'll ask them this. They'll report. And some people even report feeling heavier. And they get like warmer hands and feet. And some people, if you do it, you know, for a minute or two, they notice, yeah, my, I had a tingling in my hands and feet. And they always say, what is that? Blood flow. Okay, that's all that is. So they've really relaxed pretty deeply in a minute or two. But I point out mainly the reason you're doing this is to clear your system out to get rid of the noise. Now you're preparing your mind, body, and emotions to get on the phone, stand up and deliver, whatever you're going to do. You're more of a clear vessel, and you've removed basically your anxiety. Make sense? It makes perfect sense. And um, I can see how helpful we had a previous expert who is an expert in cold calling, and he envisioned, his visualization is pretty radical. He actually visualizes that person that's going to pick up the phone having a complete chaotic, crappy day in the worst mood of their life. And then they're going to pick up the phone and not want to talk to him. So he starts from that. And his whole objective on that call is to get them having fun, change their emotional state. So he assumes they're in the worst state to begin with. So instead of reacting to whatever emotional state they're in, he sets the tone. He sets the vibration that they want to be a part of. And it sounds like you really you're giving us the how to to really set that emotional state that we want our customers to join us in. Exactly. And you brought up a really good point. You used a really key word that I use, state. So sometimes after the person has done that little thing and we're debriefing, I say, what was that like? Um, they'll describe it. Almost universally, they, they say, wow, that really felt comfortable and peaceful and nice. Uh -huh. uh, wow, what kind of like a relief off my back. Say, yeah, you changed your state. Mm -hmm. So guess what? When you change your state and you're in an ideal state, and by the way, when the person changes that physiology, their internal climate, we have a name for that. We call that the IPS. That's the ideal performance state. Okay. And that, that's a term that uh, the, the famous uh, sports psychologist Jim Lear coined really probably back in the early 80s. Um, really, now the, coin, the term I coined beyond that, is I call it pre-zone. Okay. So if anybody hopes to get in the zone, which is, you know, kind of an experience and a place you go to because if it wasn't the place, how could you go back there again and again? It really is a real thing. It really starts inside you first. And if you cannot start or kickstart or ignite that inside you first, the zone really isn't going to show up because all the noise in you will block the zone. Mm -hmm. So we remove the noise. You get the IPS, IPS taking place. You're feeling happy. You change your state. You're in a good mood. And guess what happens to your client or your prospect because you're in a good mood? They're more in a good mood. And guess what happens to rapport? Rapport goes up. Right. Guess what happens to the real-time adjustment? Much better because all your noise has been taken out, the third eye is enhanced, and you can sense and be aware of things in real-time much more sharply. Makes perfect sense. So really you've given us the, the prep for getting ourselves in the right state right before a call and then how to 
pay attention with our third eye and refocus is necessary when we're getting out of the, our peak performance zone. So what other mental game tools can we use to really help us master that zone on command? Well, uh, I would say uh, mental readiness would be a big one or rituals. Okay. And uh, mental readiness is more like something you do prior to a big event like you're going to speak or you have a, something you do at the beginning of the day. And you go through the process I described. Um, rituals is more like something you do in a micro sense where you have a series of phone calls to make. Mm -hmm. And maybe prior to every phone call, you have a certain ritual that you do that makes you feel good and ready and clears out the noise. It might be five or ten seconds of centering. Okay. It could be looking at a picture on the wall that inspires you or relaxes you or calms you or puts you in a good mood. It could be a reminder about your goals for the call. It could be just rearranging your desk so it looks tidy. Okay. It could be looking at the picture of a loved one. Something that kind of, again, changes your state. Okay. That, that would be a definition of a ritual. And coaches know that when they see their athletes out on the floor or the playing field and their athlete is starting to mess up, the first thing that messes up are the rituals. Because the tennis player who bounces the ball five times every time before they serve suddenly only bounces it once and serves. What are they doing there? They're rushing. And why are they rushing suddenly? Well, they're rushing because they have a mental state that's rushing. They don't okay. just do it randomly. And another minute later, the same tennis player bounces the ball 15 times. What's going on there? Well, they're worried. They don't want to. They don't want to serve because now they're. They think they're going to. They're thinking negatively. They're going to mess up. So that's an example of a ritual in sports. But we have rituals in everything we do. And in sales, rituals are among your best friends because they kind of trigger that zone. This is a key concept before you need it. Okay. So you can't get in the zone with a snap of your fingers. There is a pathway or a process or an ent entry hallway you have to enter before you make that phone call, before you make that speech, before you walk in the door. You've got to be in the zone yourself, I don't know, a minute, 30 seconds at least prior to that. Okay. And if you do that, now you have presence, you have awareness, the third eye is operating, the noise is out, you're calmer. Now, these are techniques I've used with 17 world and national teams, 31 professional sports teams and leagues and athletes that have won 34 international, world, and national championships, over 75 sports, and, you know, countless salespeople, uh, public speakers who have stage fright, people I do interview coaching, I work with executives. Really, the stuff we're talking about today, even though we're talking to, you know, our viewers who are salespeople, can be applied to any arena they work in. You know, they, okay. a lot of our people do a lot of different things. So the zone is, uh, cuts across all arenas. It's really an amazing thing. Well, it sounds like, um, you know, rather than we all go to visualization and that's really uh, imagining the ideal outcome that we're after, what you're really giving us is a process to manage the moment that we're in. Don't worry about trying to get it to fit and control some preconceived notion, but manage each moment that you're in. Exactly. So you're giving me great cue words here, I'll tell you. Uh, what I do a lot of times is I talk about time zones. Okay. So let's say I'm working with someone in my office. I'll go to my whiteboard, and I'll write to the left. I'll say, okay, past, and in the middle category, I'll have present, and to the right, I'll have future. And I'll say, now, when you're in a sales call and things are going south and you're, you're angry at yourself for messing up, you made a mistake, you're depressed about it, you're regretting it, um, you're lamenting it, what time zone are you in right at that time? They go, past. And now, before you make a phone, a phone call, or maybe you're in the middle of it, and you're worried about how it's going to go, you have a fear of failure, you are dreading it, what time zone are you in there? Oh, future. And when you're in the zone, what time zone are you in now? Oh, yeah, present. And what do you do when you center? Present. Well, you see where I'm going now? Mm -hmm. So present really is the secret where you're calm, you're relaxed, you're focused, there is no fear, there's no trying. You know, you can either try or you can do. You can't tr try. You can't do both. And when you take away extra effort and micromanagement and forcing a sale, making somebody do something, then you're in the present. So every, all good things occur when you're in the present. Exactly. And really very few good things occur when you're in the past and the future. So you could say an overriding goal, remember the R word, refocus, is, oh, I'm in the past. Let me refocus to the present. 
Yeah. I'm, I'm worried. Let me refocus to the present. Now, how do you, let's talk a minute how you do such a thing. Well, part of it is just the awareness of it. I'm in the past. Oh, boom, let me come to the present. That's, that's a huge thing because a lot of people do not have the awareness. They're blocking their awareness. So that's number one. So how do you come to the present? Maybe you stop talking so much or you ask more questions so you can listen to the person. That gives you a moment to calm down. Also, listening you know, enhances rapport. Maybe you focus on their face, their movement, their breathing, and you use a little NLP and you do some mirroring and that kind of thing. You focus on your breathing. And all those things, again, just like when we did centering, that's in the moment, that's in the now, and it's all good. So then when you remake contact with the now, just the whole interaction is going to go better. Okay. I should mention one more thing. You know, a lot of salespeople will be using scripts or they'll have a pre-planned thing in their brain how they want the call to go. And maybe I could give like a little case study here. Okay. Um, this is a common reason people call me. They, they have those things going on and, and they're not working for them. And I'll, I'll listen to their script or not, but I'll say, how does it go south? Well, I, I get hung up. Um, the prospect says something I'm not used to or surprises me and I get off track. Um, I get lost in my head on what to say next. Uh, I start kind of forcing the agenda. It doesn't, it doesn't seem to work. But then when I don't use a script, I'm lost. What do I do? Well, the trick is to have a script and then forget it. Because, put it differently, does a tennis player or a golfer think about how to execute or do they just execute? They just execute. Mm -hmm. But do they know how to execute? Absolutely. How do they know how to do that? They train themselves diligently. And then before they go into their contest, just like a salesperson would do before the phone call or the sales pitch or whatever, they would remind themselves, all right, I know exactly what to do. I'm well trained. I trust that training. I'm now going to get out of my own way, stop trying too hard, and I'm going to let it happen. Mm -hmm. So this is a huge piece of the mental game or the inner game, as Galway talked about it. You know, he really talked about two things if you really boil his uh, method down, even though he's, it's a very rich uh, mm -hmm. methodology with hundreds of techniques. But he, he would say the two most important things are calming the mind, mm -hmm. and I use the term take away the noise, be subtractive, and the second one is let it happen. Because people just don't trust themselves. They also don't trust the situation to evolve the way they want it to go. So they try and they try to impose their will on the situation. And your prospect or customer can feel that and that can create resistance. So the trick is really to let go, mm -hmm. release the resistance, be in the moment, kind of let it unfold. Just let it go the way it wants to go. And you being a savvy salesperson know how to handle that. You're getting, maybe parts of your script don't exactly go according to Hoyle, but you can adjust with that. In fact, maybe it's more interesting and more helpful to your prospect if you don't follow your script because they might even teach you something. Mm -hmm. So essentially, letting go is a huge thing, huge difficulty. I notice when I work with salespeople more than other disciplines, uh, you know, they're so focused on making the sale, getting the numbers. Mm -hmm. Putting getting, the pressure on ourselves. There's a lot of pressure. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not blaming them in any way. There is a lot of pressure. But, you know, Galway talked about there's every game, and sales is a game, has two features, an inner feature and an outer feature. And in sales, the outer feature is what I just mentioned, all the results. You know, did you make the sale? Did you hit the numbers? What's my income? All right? The inner game is what we're talking about today. That's the process. So when people, this is in sports or whatever discipline, get unfortunately focused on the outcome yeah. and now you're losing touch with the inner and when you lose touch with your process you get lost because the process is what it's all about ultimately so now here's another technique um, so, some things I give people are actual techniques like here's how you breathe, here's how you relax then we can talk about cognitive restructuring in a minute, here's how you change your thoughts and others are more like conceptual but a conceptual technique is just as helpful and one of those is work the process. So when a salesperson gets lost in the interaction with their customer or prospect, they usually are focused either on the outcome or they're focused on how they're messing up. You know, their inner critic is coming to the fore, they're trying too hard, they're blocking themselves. So the trick really is get back to basics. Get back to the process. What is the process? Either the script and what your, your target is and what your strategy is or what you have to do to be in the zone and relaxed and calm. 
That's your process. You're breathing, you relax, you slow down, you take a pause, you ask them questions, basically make contact with the moment, the present moment, the now again, that's working the process and it's all good. Makes perfect sense. This is so helpful um, for anyone that has really gotten stuck in that process or feels like they put too much pressure on themselves and are kind of losing the joy for what they do because of it. Um, Bill, where can we go to get more help on the help on this area? Well, uh, my website for uh, sales coaching is mentalgamecoach.com. Okay, fabulous. And you've worked with so many business people, as you mentioned, and salespeople. You must have some f um, favorite examples of how you've really helped people overcome their uh, inner game barriers, if you will, and uh -huh. um, achieve success. Do you have any that you could share with us? Sure. Probably one that stands out that's actually pretty common is, is kind of like what I mentioned earlier with the person who comes to me who's who gets pretty hung up on their script or they have trouble, uh, let's say, delivering a little speech or, or a sales pitch to somebody. And I discover what their blocks are. Like what you know, give them a checklist of blocks and they, they go down that and discover, that's right, I am trying to force the issue. I'm self-conscious. I'm trying to remember my script word for word. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm in a hurry. You know, I, I'm so nervous, I, I rush. And then I practice with them, you know, maybe they give their script to me, you know, they're, they're doing it by video or phone or in person. And um, I coach them in the moment, show them when to slow down. You know, first we go through the whole thing we talked about with the zone and mm -hmm. IPS and how do you remove the noise and all that stuff. And a lot of times just that alone does the trick is now they're coming at that presentation from a place of calmness. In fact, I should mention one thing, another really specific technique I work on a lot, and I'll, I'll ask people whatever the discipline is, do you need, you know, before you compete or before you perform in sales, do you believe you're, you're better off psyching up or are you better off psyching down? And a lot of people will say, well, that's an, I never thought of psyching down. I never actually heard of psyching down. What do you mean about psyching down? I, I psych up. Psyching down is the thing we're talking about, getting calmer. I discovered that most salespeople usually have a problem because they like to psych up. They're too excited. They're too amped up. You know, they're too go, 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 which is, again, normal sales, and we're not blaming or judging anybody. It's what it is. That's the nature of selling. However, I find that most salespeople benefit more by psyching down. And that's just another term for what we're talking about here, calming, centering, okay. slowing down. You know, there's a phrase to go faster, go slower. Mm -hmm. And if you can go slower at the beginning of an interaction, especially prior to the time you make contact with a client or prospect, your internal clock is going to be slower in a good way, slower like you're making contact with the now. And then when you do that, you're way more likely to make contact with them, mm -hmm. you know, in, in a nice encounter. So I, I do talk about that. So psyching down is a big one. Probably um, one of my favorite techniques would be the three R's. And the three R's is called release, review, and reset in whatever order you want to do. So let's say you've just had a, a, a sales call that wasn't so hot and you're feeling bad about that call. Well, before you make the next call, process it. Don't just slam it in the next call because right now, because you're feeling bad about that call, probably your mood and mm -hmm. a little bit of your sales self-esteem has come down, right? Your confidence got dashed. So a good thing to do is process it by using the three R's. And you, you just take a moment. It takes about 20 seconds or whatever you want to do. First, you review the call. Okay, and what was there were some good things about it. What were they? One, two, three. Now, what went south? One, two, three. Oh, okay, I, let's not do that anymore. Let's adjust that. There's the adjustment thing. And now you release it. And this is critical to release that negativity. So now you release it by one of the methods we talked about earlier. You, you look at something on your wall that triggers something happy. You change your mood. You do your centering, whatever. And now you've released it. And now you do a reset or a refocus. What is the refocus? All right, let me now do my breathing. Let me tune into this client. What do I know about them? Let me see their profile. What am I going to say? And Okay, now let's make the phone call. Boom. So the three R's are utilized by really everybody uh, all the time, even though they don't know that's kind of an unconscious process. Mm -hmm. And athletes use this all in. So that's the three R. One of my reported by people to me, one of their best techniques. Well, probably used all the time minus the reset. We beat ourselves up and then we take that into the next call. Exactly. Yeah, makes makes good sense. So as you're working with your clients to help them get into the zone on command, how do they get stuck as they're getting started on that? 
Well, they get stuck by, um, depends on the personality. Let's say the person is very type A, which a lot of salespeople have that tendency. Yeah. Um, they have a hard time giving up control. They have a hard time uh, rushing because they're in a hurry to, to achieve. You know, they've got a lot on their plate. They're overwhelmed. And a lot of salespeople are very intelligent and very verbal. So because they, they have that going for them, you know, I use the expression that a, a strength taken to an extreme can often turn into a weakness. So that happens to those folks because they think so much and they're in their head so much, they have a real, they get clogged up. Okay. So a phrase I like to use is get out of your head and get into your body. Okay. And what that means is you have to stop the thinking, at least the conscious thinking. You have to allow your unconscious to take over. Now, Galway called the unconscious self too, and he termed that the body and let's say your trained instincts. So you can call it a multitude of things, but you know, people kind of get that, gee, when you're on autopilot, which is a big feature of the zone, yeah. you are not consciously doing what you're doing. You're just kind of doing it on instinct and um, uh, kind of momentum. You're, you're doing it nicely, but you're not over-controlling. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the, the really common blocks. And the trick is to just, again, get out of your own way. That's a phrase that a lot of people know. So that your true talent and inner strength can come out naturally and spontaneously. Even, I call it, again, trained instinct, not instinct. Because, you know, if you don't know sales, you don't have a sales instinct. You have a, a natural instinct, which may be incorrect. But once you've trained yourself in sales or whatever you're doing, then step aside and let those good trained instincts come forth. Makes perfect sense. And the confidence you project by just calming yourself down, not rushing through things, not feeling anxious, attracts customers to you. Very much so. Yeah, you, you develop much more in the moment awareness. Like we said, the readjustment. You have a presence to you. Mm -hmm. You know, they talk about in uh, entertainment, certain people have a star quality. Mm -hmm. You can walk into a convention room and, and pick out the stars. They have a certain something. I don't, is it magnetism, attractiveness, confidence, a presence? You know, probably they have a subtractive quality. You know, that, that's a way to look at it. They don't have a lot of noise. They certainly don't have self-doubt. Mm -hmm. They're probably optimistic thinkers. They're possibility thinkers. They're big thinkers. And that is what attracts other people to them. Excellent. Well, do you have any final words of advice for our sales viewers, um, people working on raising their sales game on how they can really make this controlling and commanding, getting in the zone work best for them? I do. I, I say it would be uh, know, know what the zone is and know when you're in it. Debrief yourself after you've been in it and get to know yourself better so you find it easier and easier to get in the zone. Practice, play around with the psyching down thing. Uh -huh. And most importantly, probably the number one thing is we talked about visualization. And I have a, a little technique called verbal visualization. And the way it works is this. Prior to every sales encounter, uh, you know, unless you're making a lot of calls in a row and you're on a roll, you just skip it. But especially on a big one, you use the process of verbal visualization. And it's called this. And it's interesting to note that maybe... Uh, five to seven percent of the population cannot visualize, at least natively. Now, maybe they can be trained after that, but there's a percentage that don't naturally visualize. They do what we call feel feelization, so they can kind of feel it in their body, and that's like the kinesthetic types, you know. Okay. Hands-on people. So when I work with them, I say visualize this. I don't use it anymore. I say, imagine or feel this. And then afterwards, I ask them, "What did you do?" I felt wh what you were talking about. They can't picture it. Okay. So that's why I've developed the term verbal visualization. So maybe what you're going to say to yourself prior to this call or before you go in the door on the call, all right, here's what I'm going to do in the next 20 minutes. And out loud or in your head, maybe better out loud, you start describing how you want that encounter to go. Okay. First, okay. you start with yourself. I'm going to be relaxed. I'm going to be focused, really plugged into the customer. I'm going to be in the now. I'm going to be clear in my mind. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be optimistic. Basically, one thing they could do is just read the zone handout that I give them. That's a great way to do it. At the end of that, what they've done is now put into their mind and in their heart the ideal goals for the call. And as they said the words, even though they're not trying to visualize, guess what's occurring? As they say the words, the pictures are now forming in their head. So what I call that is intentionality. Mm -hmm. That's being on purpose rather than on random. 
I love it because you're having us visualize what we're in control of too, instead of visualizing what we want the prospect to do, which is completely out of our control. Exactly. Perfect. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Bill, for giving us this fabulous, fabulous direction in really how we can master that inner game of success that might be getting in our way, even though we've got all the other sales skills down. It's been my pleasure, Mary. It's been a lot of fun speaking with you. Greatly appreciated. And thank you to our viewers for tuning in and investing in your own success. The Sales Mastery Summit is here to help you never stop learning from the best. Take care.